on behalf of the Minister of Foreign Affairs, Antonio de Aguiar Patriota, and of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, I have the honor to congratulate the United Nations, especially the Departments of Economic and Social Affairs and the Departments of Public Information, here represented by Mr. Kiyo Akazaka, for the initiative of the World Campaign, The Future We Want. I think that the future was not qualified as sustainable. It is a consensus that all of us we want all of us want a sustainable future. So it would be uh, pleonasm and re the redundant to aggregate the sustainable to this campaign. Once this discussion that we want to address in Rio next year about sustainable development, it will be a paradigm for everyone interact with the civil society for many years this interaction with the federal government is searched as well i say that it is a, ta a difficult task because we we think that it is never enough we are always enhancing and perfecting we are having we are having always complaints there are people who are not sufficiently represented uh, interests that oppose to collective interests. I think it is a noble exercise, the ones that uh, the United Nations Information Center has have as a mission, and I salute and I congratulate everyone that is present here. And I would like to ask for the permission to a cordial greeting to Giancarlo, someone who has been making a remarkable work with us here in Itamaraty. The Declaration of Rio de Janeiro in the Principle 10 has the following. The best way to treat environmental issues is with the participation of all the citizens interested in several levels. The state should facilitate and finance the sensibilization and the participation of the public, putting the information at their disposal. The Agenda 21 had uh, a section of in strengthening of the multi-stakeholders role and the several stakeholders and created nine major groups that today participate in the, in the discussions of the sustainable development. This campaign, The Future We Want, is entirely described in in the spirits of Rio 92 and Rio Plus 20. The work of the offices of United Nations is spread in more than 60 countries. is not only informing but promoting the seminars and creating spaces, debates and roundtables will be crucial for the discussions of sustainable development go over the restricted universe of government agencies and own and NGOs specialized in environments and uh, globally to engage this organized civil society especially about social issues and economic issues after all we have been insisting that Rio plus 20 is not an environmental conference it's very little to to make an environmental conference after years of coordination about development it is a conference about sustainable development. It is an inclusive conference. We are not going to reduce the space of negotiations of anyone. It is a, confer a participatory conference. It is a, a one, one of the most important uh, political moments of our president, Dilma Rousseff. So we have the support and the commitments of all the, the government staff. Brazil considers the mobilization of the civil society essential for the success of Rio Plus 20, especially to achieve the primary goals of the conference that are treating, addressing the, the new challenges of sustainable development, discussing green economy in the context of sustainable development and poverty eradication, and with the most difficult to develop a new institutional framework for sustainable development. Someone asked a question that was pertaining to 
the necessity of to involve uh, government issues and environmental issues, especially in the press coverage. The journalists that are specialized in environmental issues and ecosystems, and also the ministries, the many departments and divisions that have this, this name, environment. It's difficult to see a unit that has the title sustainable development or economic and social and environmental uh, issues, these three pillars of sustainable development. So there is a conceptual challenge in that is in our mind, instead of thinking only about balancing the issues that it has to do with the environmental issue, to think about employment and the, the differences, the racial differences, and differences in beliefs and sexual orientation and political visions. And still, we have financial means to so this can be done. Without this, we are going to only to project in the architecture of the ideal without giving concrete initiatives for these environmental issues. So the, the economical part, the generation of employment and manufacturing and services with the minimum of carbon emissions. So these are the goals of Rio Plus 20. I'd like to ask permission to talk about three moments of participation of civil society. One of it is in the process of preparation of for the conference Rio Plus 20. The second is during the during the conference, and the third it was a, re a reference about the Brazilian proposal and what it contains, particularly mobiliz mobilizing the civil society. The Brazilian government put together a national commission to follow up and to discuss about Rio Plus 20. This commission has 14 representatives of several segments of civil society, which one has a, uh, a substitute, so there are actually 28 representatives. It's not enough. I say to you that it's, it's not possible to negotiate texts and make discussions with, but it's, it's a start, I think. For the first time, we have a commission where the, the participation of civil society is superior to the environmental uh, representatives. And it, they are interacting with 28, well, two groups of 14, so this is significant. I come from a time that in Tamarachi, talking to NGOs it was not an obvious exercise. We need to ask for permission first. Can we make a contact? Can I talk to someone? The frontier between the governments and the NGOs were very rigid and difficult to be transpassed. Now we are searching this participation and it gave me special satisfaction that seeing that indigenous people representatives, that it is one of the segments represented in the National Commission. I'm very pleased that we launched, it, we launched a campaign today that for the people who are not seated in any bodies, don't have ways to continuously to participate in these discussions that they can f feel informed, they can feel invited to give opinions. So I salute the representatives of the indigenous community. We would like to have more representatives uh, showing their views and bringing reactions. If without this, our work would not be sufficiently efficient. In addition to the indigenous people, we have other communities, traditional communities, the business sectors, workers, NGOs, represented by the networks, social movements, and the academia. As I said, it's a difficult task. It's not always that we can have a 100% positive evaluation of this effort. There are other initiatives that are, are being made in case of the federal government, the secretary of the, the presidents, that is a body that deals the relationship with the organized civil society, has also sought to use activities in this, the social economical forum in Porto Alegre 
about sustainable developments in Rio Plus 20. The Council of Social and Economical Development that assists the presidency in many aspects carried out and signs um, an agreement with many different segments of society that is agreement for the susten sustainable development. This agreement was a subsidized for the work of the National Commission. This document was the outcome of conversations, interactive conversations about Rio Plus 20 that was promoted by this council throughout 2011. In addition to the preparation and this initiative of interaction with civil society, there is an innovative element in Rio Plus 20 that is a space for discussions that will be created between the preparatory committee and the segments called high level. The negotiators that will discuss and they will sit together and then there will be a, then there will be a space between 16 and 19 of June where they, we will undertake round tables, tables of discussions and sustainability conversations there will be eight tables. It is a process that is being uh, designed, but we think to undertake round tables about food safety, energy, water, oceans, economical fundamentals of sustainability, innovation, cities, and decent works along with migrations. So during the conference, instead of having as it happens a lot in the civil society uh, isolated from the discussions or in parallel discussions there will be a participation during all the the preparation and the high level of the events especially an exclusive space for discussing sustainability this is innovative and i would uh, we should seize this opportunity to bring the contributions within these possible aspects to canalize the discussion. In addition to this, the organization committee is organizing spaces to collect many events from organizations that the civil society wants to promote during the Rio Plus 20. I said it was going to be an inclusive and participatory uh, conference so we want to include the capacity of NGOs to manifest them and to bring publications and panels and discussions and to this we are going to use in Rio de Janeiro I'm here with the mastering logistics here that identified in Rio de Janeiro several spaces to collect these manifestations of the civil society and lastly, I'd like to mention the Brazilian contribution. We delivered as many countries uh, contribution that is not definite. It is subject to change during, during this year, until the end of the year and until the conference. But it brings concerns that gives the topic of the priority for Brazil. One of the priorities is the issue of information, the technological information and innovations. It is a concern of our president and we think that we have the need to use creativity, human creativity. And some ministers uh, that we are coming back from a, a trip to Africa, the science and technology ministry calls a human talent. I think it's a more appropriate name you uh, know, rather finding many words to describe the same things that we are able to create. So innovation is a priority. Another one is to put the highlights in the participation of women. The minister Isabella Teixeira has been saying this and other people as well, but it's remarkable as that the women has a special contribution in establishing patterns of sustainable consumption since the the mother who asked the children to turn off the lights and don't use the computer and the management of the finances what to buy and not to buy and to buy a, a pollutant car or instead of buying another car 
especially in the rural areas that they have practices of agricultural production in several developing countries that are sustainable and uh, they ha it has to be encouraged so this is a highlight that we'll put in this uh, in the women in several instances especially in patterns of conception of the families in the part in the parts of the sustainable development the brazilian contribution is has the, the, the participation of the stakeholders in the process, in multilateral process, but in, in sync with the principle 10 of the Declaration of Rio, IU, that deals with more access to information. If the person doesn't have information, access to information, they will not going to be able to contribute to the sustainable development. So we are proposing to launch a negotiator process for a global convention about access to information you will see that we are here we, we, we are not just closing this yet but Itamaraty in coordination with other ministries has worked to open the existing spaces for access to information and the means to access information we talked a lot about the democratization of the United Nations it is a real, a real effort from for many years and will continue but we don't talk a lot about the efforts of Brazil that's a democratization of the access to internet internet is something that is restricted to a population that has the access to these means that people who have access in internet in a certain way it is a selective one but it's an important mean I believe that everyone here in this room use internet somehow and everybody would be shocked to know and to see that the access to internet it is managed by two or three stakeholders in one country everything that is done that has a concentrated management it is not democra democratic it's not induced so the means to access information are also very important another thing is the structure to access the capacity to reach a great public the newspapers has a, a crucial function to inform and the television and radio but social networks has an important role as well not only social networks they irradiate information that the, the, the teacher will uh, use in, in the classrooms the the, the the priests in the church and then anyway there are a, a multitude of means that irradiate information and the spirits of our proposal for a global convention about access to information is to guarantee that the access is inclusive and democratic and that there is a public participation in the decision making I said that the process of interacting with civil society is difficult is questioned first because the state has interest in a democratic environment is manifested by the elections but that's not enough uh, it's not enough to say I represent the people and I exercise my rights it's necessary to exercise the interaction to open the process of decision making to many people in an orderly fashion so we we're not hostage of non-legitimate interests interests so our expectations is to help the imperatives of representativeness and legitimacy and transparency that should govern the these relationships and to fundament the principle of sustainable development I'd like to close to wish that these two working days that will be m most productive and the participation that in, in a campaign these important that the future we want has been made in the, in the in the house of Rio Branco in this historical palace because diplomacy is only meaningless meaningful if we have participation of the society thank you very much mm -hmm.